After weeks of imagining, brainstorming, and researching ideas for their lunar cities of the future, teams from around the country are starting to break ground on their designs. It's all part of the journey on this week's episode of the Future City Competition. Each year, the Future City Competition features a different topic for students to focus on as they design and build their cities. Everything from resilience in the face of natural disasters to green energy, to this year's theme, living on the moon. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders from around the country have been working hard to showcase their solutions for inhabiting such a challenging environment. So we figured what better way to explore this year's theme than by going direct to someone who's actually been to space, like lived in it for 200 days. So without further ado, please join us in welcoming NASA astronaut, Ricky Arnold. Hey teams, I'm NASA astronaut Ricky Arnold. The moon, what an awesome destination with very unique engineering challenges. That is one of the reasons we are so fortunate to have the International Space Station. The ISS has been occupied by human beings from around the world for over 20 years. It's the size of a five bedroom house traveling around the earth every 90 minutes. I've lived on the ISS twice. The last time was for 197 days and what an awesome experience. We are focused on two things on the space station, improving life back here on Earth and figuring out what we need to do to keep people happy and healthy as we head off into the solar system to live and work. One thing we have learned is about the importance of exercise to keep our bones and muscles strong and healthy in an environment where you float everywhere. We exercise twice a day on two treadmills, one exercise bike, and one advanced resistive exercise device. Of course, on the moon, you will have one sixth the gravity of the Earth, so the exercise requirements will be different from ISS, but also different from Earth. On ISS, our water is largely recycled. We recycle almost everything from humidity in the air to even urine. Though we have grown some plants on the ISS, we just don't have the room or resources to grow enough to feed astronauts. One of our best days on orbit is when a cargo vehicle arrives carrying fresh fruit and veggies. Communication with home is by radio, video conference, or email. This is really important and involves a satellite network. All of these things and more were problems that needed to be solved just like you guys are doing right now for your future city. Meeting by video conference or over the phone have been how the ISS has been working for years. Working as part of a team from a long way away is difficult, but you can do it. Wishing you all the best and an amazing engineering challenge. Stay safe, be kind, and work together to make it all happen. And hope to see you living in your future city one day. All the best. That was awesome, but I still can't figure out how they made that squat machine work in zero gravity. Huge thanks to astronaut Arnold for taking time to join us sharing his advice for future city teams. Speaking of which, time to check in with our student teams to see how their designs and builds are taking shape. At first we were all doing the research phase and then after we were split into two groups where a group wrote the essay and a group built the model. But at that time we already knew like what we wanted to include in the city because we had done all the research. We just needed the essay group to put that in word form and we would just have to make the physical model. So the three people who were on the building team started out with like the major parts of the city, like the residential, the commercial and the industrial zones. Uh, and the essay team finished first. They finished their essay before we finished all of our building. So uh, one, all of them helped with the smaller parts that we hadn't quite finished. It was really helpful that we didn't have to create like the model all in one and we could have like separate parts of it. Like we were able to zoom in on the housing structures and like what each individual housing structure would be like. And then we zoom in on the commercial area and it wasn't just all jumbled together. We really had to like think like out of the box and related to materials. We ended up using cotton balls and gray spray paint to imitate the surface of the moon. Our whole city was really made out of just recyclable materials. Like we used cardboard and water bottles and tin cans and Nadia even used paper mache. And we didn't even spend all that much money. We did not get anywhere close to our budget, but I think it was really cool that we 
got pretty much everything from our houses. When we finished building, it was just kind of like this huge like breath of fresh air because like we had been kind of stressing because we needed to get all the deliverables in on time. But I think that in general, like we worked very well as a team together. We communicated <laughs> clearly and um, we didn't really have any disagreements. We were open to new ideas. We were willing to compromise. And I think overall our group dy dynamic worked very well. Our design phase was a lot better than we expected because our research and imagining phases were pretty hectic and we were kind of assuming our design phase would be as hectic as that also. So we had to sketch out a few different drafts before we actually did the model. We built a lot of houses and some of them didn't work because we changed our scale once. We changed our scale to 125th because it makes the buildings big enough to where you can recognize what they would be, but it also keeps them on the small side to where you still have the model aspect of it. We also built um, a Times Square, or a Lunar Square, we called it. We chose to build that Times Square because I noticed a bunch of people had some sort of main focus building. We didn't think we had to, but we were kind of like, oh, well, maybe we could have this main focus building. Oh, but how do we want to do this? And then we thought of it, oh, well, we could do this Times Square and have everything kind of revolving around it. I think our model is um, actually getting very close to being done. Probably my favorite part of building the model was taking all these different recycled materials and actually putting them into actual real buildings that actually represented something. I thought it was really cool how we only had a few resources and how we can just pull everything together. Incredible work from all of our teams. So excited to see where they take it. Well, that'll wrap up this week's episode. See you next time.